Howdy everybody in YouTube land. Here's another video based about scoreboards. Again, um, I'm not sure how many people are actually interested in this kind of stuff, but I had another project come up with doing a conversion of a scoreboard. This time it's a little bit more simple. Um, so without further ado, what we have here is an All-American scoreboard for baseball MP3351. And that's what they look like. And they are old, they're vintage, they're late 80s, early 90s. They're all individual light bulbs. Anybody that's a sports fanatic or has been to, you know, junior games or stuff like that, you're, you, you've probably seen these a million times. And, well, here's the thing. They're slowly being phased out in favor of LED because, obviously, these here run on incandescent light bulbs. And I'm, I, I'm pretty sure we're still going to see those bulbs around within the next 10 years, but what about the next 15? Maybe the next 20? Who knows how much longer these bulbs are going to be here. But that's not a problem. I can always convert it to LED later down the road, but that's not an issue. Uh, basically what the job involves of is this. There was an unfortunate accident. Um, well, I wouldn't say accident. I'd call it vandalism. Uh, there was a little league that does kids baseball. Uh, pretty close to my house that has four fields and four individual scoreboards. Um, somebody stole all four desktop controllers and cut the cables and plates and stuff like that so really it's a mess and they didn't know what they were going to do except maybe go out and spend another five thousand dollars on each scoreboard to replace them these things aren't cheap guys they are not cheap at all so i come up with a solution um they want to be able to control these things from their phones such as this one right here, which is a rooted Android G1 that's old, old school. I don't use it for anything. I just keep it lying around for absolutely nothing except for stuff like this, you know? So, um, and then, whoops, then there's my debug circuit there. Um, but aside from that, um, you remember the project, the previous scoreboard project, where there was actually three scoreboards of the same type, but they were the 3350s. They were retired for various reasons, but I think the main reason why they were retired is because they were hit by lightning, controllers were missing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, same, same problem, and then I converted one of them to the uh, digital type with a whole new LED display and all that stuff, which got destroyed because of they left it outside and kids or vandalism just don't don't go along they destroyed it but anyway um because it was set up to be portable um uh, but the other one was stripped down for parts and the third one was scrapped we eventually scrapped it so uh i kept all the control boards to it so i figured you know i'm just gonna reverse engineer the control boards and make things work until i found out that the 3350s and the 3351s are completely different according to this circuit or this manual here so <laughs> i had to go back out there and grab the chassis i pulled the, the service door off with the chassis and sure enough they were completely different so what we got over here is the bag of parts let me kick the lights on so we can see what we're doing poor light so we have our c32 controllers our relays some capacitors and you know more capacitors resistors and um, Bluetooth dongles and I'll get into that in a minute and just some other miscellaneous stuff put all that away for now because I want to get into a little bit of education which you can if you're gonna get bored you might as well switch the channel now but I want to explain something the scoreboard that I stripped down first go around these are the control boards Okay, there's basically a chassis, and there's a pigtail cable that goes from here to here, and you can control up to three of these boards because there's three individual address pins. This was set on address two, one, two, and three. Um, there's your standard 8051 microcontroller and ROM. Um, this one is really weird on how it works. There's basically, you've got 
your, your standard plugs, because each plug goes into a digit of incandescent light bulbs. Um, and it's parallel control through these decoders and drivers. The There's also, when I reverse engineered it, I also found a 6.8 millisecond sample and hold circuit. And it took me a minute to figure out what that's for, because the thing is, you got 20 microsecond, 30 microsecond long pulses when you're sequentially scanning these. Um, if you're going to do dimming of the display, which this thing does for nighttime usage, you have to be able to sample and hold your pulse to drive this optocoupler. And basically what that optocoupler does is it s turns the 60 hertz transformer into a square wave, a digital logic square wave. and it basically, when you got a sine wave that starts like this, it blocks off the ability to trigger on one specific side of the zero crossing, so which dims the display in half. Um, it's weird how this works because I still don't quite understand how this, the triacs are fired, but what the way they did it is the circuit is completely hot. What they did was there's a 12 volt power transformer that runs the, through a rectifier and a regulator and gives you five volts to the logic. Well, what they did was they tied the neutral to this point here, which is 12 volts above ground. So I'm thinking, why? Okay, so this whole circuit floats 12 volts above neutral, I mean. The ground of this circuit floats 12 volts above neutral. So my guess is, these, these guys here, I know, they pull the triac to, to the logic ground, which is 12 volts above neutral, somehow it triggers I'm not sure, but I do know there's a lot of problems with this design, which is why they had to opto-isolate the communication line. Otherwise, your controller would be sitting at hot, It'd be tied to the mains voltage, which is not fine. I mean, it's not hard to control this. It's parallel controlled, sequentially scanning, and different address lines go to the different chip selects, and they can control three of these boards. Um, but I don't code in 8051. I only I don't know much about it. I just do atmels and stuff like that. And another thing that bothers me too is this is not synchronized to the line voltage. This is scanned at whatever by the crystal oscillator. So up among the phase, it can be triggering at any point. It doesn't matter. It, it relies on the incandescence of the bulb to null out any flicker. But if you look, pay attention, you can actually see flicker on the digits a little bit. So, but still, it's not that bad of a problem. So I, can, I was getting ready to do the engineering of the CPU board to control it through the phone until I realized the difference between the 3350 and the 3351. And these boards are actually made by General Indicator Corporation, which is a division of Everbright All-American Scoreboards. Um, so out with that, I pulled the chassis out of the 3351 and there's the driver and CPU board out of that and it is completely different but it's a little bit safer still you get the same ROM and the same 8051 microcontroller but notice they dropped the number of connections on the board and they replaced it with a single IC which is actually a serial shift register open collector pull down and uh, so this isn't multiplex, it's static driven. What they do is they pull the line low and they leave it low. But the output enable of this line, this chip has an output enable, which is hooked to the same exact opto-isolator circuit. So for dimming, you set one of these bits, which goes into the same type of filter network, and it holds this down and it cycles the input, or the output enable, 60 times a second, which only allows a triggering on one side of the phase or one side of the cycle, which works great. Um, but this one's a little more safer. They have two individual power supplies, both 5 volts, and or they're actually both 5 volts, but you got a cold side supply and a hot side supply. Why? Because there's opto-isolators right there. 8-pin opto-isolators, which are 6N138 opto-isolator, which isolate this side to this side. So this side's hot. This time they did something different. They connect. They did not connect it to the high side before the regulator. 
they connected it directly at the 5 volts. So the neutral side of the AC is connected to the logic 5 volts. Uh, I'm assuming so they can trigger the triac. But to isolate the CPU away from that, they used opto isolators. So this side of the CPU is completely safe. And the opto isolators go in and they send a signal to the digital board, which is sitting 5 volts above neutral. I think. I, I still, I, I don't quite understand their concept there, but you know, it's all nice and dandy. And uh, this being serial, I can just statically set the bits and we're done. And you can chain, chain as many of them as you want. It's just the more you chain, the longer it takes for the microcontroller to clock out the, the data bytes. So, move those out of the way. And I want to show you one more thing. There's the chassis I pulled out of the 3351, which there's the second second driver board. First driver board goes right here. First driver board goes there. And you got a hot and a neutral, which don't try to plug your hard drives into those folks because that would be a very bad idea. You got your hot side and your neutral side running these boards. And then the CPU board goes, I'm not going to clip it in because i got to clip it right back out, goes right in there. And then the two transformer connections go right here. And there's two individual transformers, one for the cold side and one for the hot side. So uh, the microprocessor board that's going in here is going to be coded in such a way that I put a pigtail and a relay, which actually I got one out of the bag already, a relay into this point. Wire the pigtail up, lock the relay up here or down here or something, whatever, something. Um, basically what this is going to do, it's going to cut off the hot to, it's going to cut this connection right here to the bulb drivers. So the bulb drivers no longer function and they won't light the bulbs. And uh, I'm debating whether to have it cut off the connection to the transformer as well for the hot side only. Leave the cold side running because if I don't leave the cold side running, how am I going to turn it back on? So that's just more stuff to debate in the future. And then there's the lightning arrestor for the communication line going in, which plugs in right here. So without further ado, before my battery runs dead, we're going to do one more thing. Enable the Bluetooth. We're going to take, turn on the phone. We're going to run the program. And that's the actual organization name is Millville Baseball. So what we're going to do, I'm going to hit menu. I'm going to hit connect. It's going to look for the device. One device found. We're going to choose a device, field one. It's going to connect to it. It connected. And the scoreboard is initialized. So I can sit here and, you know, thumb everything up the way I want it to do. I can say the guest has got a crap load of scores. It's sending it along the way, so we're going to hit the back button. Don't want to save this game for later? Yeah, because I want to go connect to another board. Disconnects from the unit. Restart the program. There's my remembered settings. And connect again. Found the device. Choose a device to connect. Connect it again. No wires. It's all connected. And I want to clear the board. Start over again. Well, let's just go ahead and pull the menu up and we'll just go ahead and disconnect. Disconnects from the device. Don't want to save the game later? No. Exits the program. There you go, guys. Thank you for watching.